Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and today we crash test a cheap sport helmet, Icon Armada. All right, so maybe cheap is a little bit harsh. In reality, this is Icon's middle of the road sport bucket. It looks down upon the Icon Alliance and looks up to the Icon airframe. But in the big picture of things, it only costs $200, and that makes it a cheap helmet. Last week, we torture tested a bazillion dollar showy, and it scored 66%. I'm curious to see how our budget beauty does by comparison. Oh shit, SeaWorld. I don't expect our waterproofing test is gonna go that well for the Armada. Player reviewers often call this a breezy helmet, but one filled with less bullshit would just call it leaky. I mean, all these rear exhaust slits, they're stuck open back here. And then Icon relies on just a peg and a hole to cinch this visor <coughs> tight to the rubber flange. That works about as well as you might expect, not to mention that the peg doesn't quite fit the hole, leaving yet another gap for the water to find. Screw it! So that was fun. Um, <laughs> the visor actually did better than I thought it would. Not much came through there, but I have loads of ice cold water coming through the rear exhaust vents. I don't normally take pleasure in handing out failing grades, but f you, Armada. Now for soundproofing. We have a fan to supply wind noise, and because this is an American helmet, we've chosen something rather patriotic to approximate our road noise. When we ran this test with the mic out in the open, we achieved a peak of 104 decibels. Now we're going to throw the Armada on, see how much we cancel. So we peaked at 99 decibels inside the helmet, which is only a 5 decibel reduction in volume, and that is not good enough. Failing grade for soundproofing. Now I still haven't forgiven the air matter for getting me wet earlier, and so I'm going to shoot it with pointed pellets at 500 feet per second. It tends to be a pretty good way to test puncture strength, since it always takes a few shots to penetrate right through. Anything that survives three rounds or better is passing grade. Not yet. So this will be the do or die shot, because um, if it survives three, then it's a pass. Uh, almost through, but no, it's going to be a pass. Three shots, still good. Oh, I think we're right through on that one. So we've gone right through in four shots. If you remember the bazillion dollar showy we tested last time also took four, which is amazing. I mean, this helmet is like a third of the price, but the visor is just as strong. Next, we're going to shoot the shell and uh, see how that goes. Not through yet. It looks pretty close though, um, so we'll see. I don't think we're through. Uh, it's probably worth taking a look though. Yeah, I mean that's not EPS foam in there, so we're not actually quite through the polycarb shell yet. It's really impressive because that's three shots, and our showy, which was fancy organic fibers and fiberglass, lasted three shots we got right through it. This one is going to survive more than three, uh, and it's a cheaper helmet, so that's impressive. Okay. That looks deep enough. I did not think that I would be needing five shots to actually get through this shell. Um, Polycarb is cheap. It's cheap. It's a lot cheaper than the showy. And it's not fiberglass and organic fiber. It's a cheap helmet, but uh, it took us a full five shots to get through it. So pretty impressive value there. So the visor failed at four shots and the shell failed at five. Both are really good for quite a cheap helmet. I'm surprised. And since three is the official pseudo-scientific standard here at Fort 9, well, of course, it's going to be a passing grade for visor strength and for puncture strength. Next, testing impact protection, which of course means we're off to the batting cage. So we lost some pieces, a side plate, a vent cover, whatever. Also, the rapid release shield system seems to have rapidly released at least from one side. We'll see if that's still working or not later. My psychic powers though tell me that this 50G sticker is gonna be triggered and oh boy is it. Now see, I kinda knew that was gonna happen because this helmet here, it's a long oval helmet and it's one that Icon desperately wanted to be very slim and very light. So essentially they took a narrow helmet and made it narrower. Not good for side impact protection. Maybe it'll do better around back. Yep, that's much better. Hopefully it does equally well on top. How do you think you did, Brian F9? 
Ugh. Ooh, Brian thinks he has more than a 50G bruise up on top of his head. That's not so good. So, the Armada passed only one of three impacts just on the rear, which is an overall failing grade for impact protection. On to abrasion resistance then. All right, thank goodness <laughs> we finally got through uh, through the shell down to the EPS foam right in there. You can start to see it peek in through. Um, this shell was really thick. You know, polycarbonates, it's, it's cheap. It's not as expensive as like fiberglass or carbon fiber, but I mean, I come in, it's so damn thick. Two minutes, 55 seconds to get to the EPS foam. It's actually the best abrasion resistance we've seen. Welcome to Golf Town, a place where we test chin bar strength with no delicate touch. The last time the Shoei Neotech basically exploded on impact, but we forgot to put something into the helmet itself to see how much force was actually transferred to the face. So despite using the most precise instruments known to modern science, our testing method was kind of problematic. Like all of life problems, however, it can be solved with a melon. All right, let's have a look here. The proof is in the pudding and it looks like we might have some pudding coming out of our watermelon. So, no small amount of damage to my face here. As you can tell, the chimbar caved in and uh, you know, that's, that's kind of left a mess <laughs> on my watermelon. So yeah, I mean, I've always wondered if, if the air matter was a bit of a safety hazard. The chimbar, every time I put it on, sits so close to my face. I always thought maybe that's dangerous. It turns out it kind of is. So that's a failing grade for chin bar strength, which means we've come to the eighth test, a longtime favorite of pyromaniacs, heat resistance. So polycarbonate is a type of plastic, and most plastics like to burn. Eh, this one's sort of crackling, but actually not having the easiest time getting through there. Let's see if we can get a little fire into the helmet itself. Yeah, that's burning a little bit better in there. Let's try the face shield now. Crackling, this is beautiful. Come on, baby, yep, I think, yes, we've just busted through there, that's good. And people often complain that these rubber O-rings on here aren't seated properly and they come unstuck, so let's see about that icon. Let's see if we can unstick it. Uh, that rubber is not having the easiest time burning either. All in all, I've been pretty impressed so far. There's the rubber coming apart now. One of the best liners in my opinion, I love this stuff. Turns out it burns quite well as well. Sit rep. The Armada was not easy to light on fire at first. When we actually got into the inside of this helmet, I would say that the cheek pads in here are straight up flammable because the thing basically gutted itself. In fact, it burned so hot that it did this to the face shield, which we've never seen before. But okay, Icon, chill out. Yes, of course, nothing is gonna burn from the inside out from your helmet unless you spontaneously combust. It was in fact very difficult to get into this thing with fire from the outside, so fine. By the skin of your teeth, you do get a passing grade for heat resistance. And that's gonna bring us to Fortnite's ninth test build quality, where we ask the question, what still works? And on the icon, not much. It is actually quite remarkable that this, the rapid release system on one side of the shield, does still click in. But on the other side, nope. And that's a critical failure there. The other thing that's actually reasonably impressive is these side plates. They will actually still click into the visor, more or less. Um, so that's something as well. But for the most part, no. I mean, the vents don't work anymore. And mainly every time we hit this helmet, stuff was falling off of it. That's not that great. And most of the time that stuff was not reattachable anyway. So one, two, three, four, which is four out of nine, 44. 0.4%. That's about 20% less than the Shoei Neotech we tested last week, but this is a cheap helmet. It's about three times cheaper than the Shoei Neotech we tested, so perhaps that's what you'd expect. At least in these cases, it seems that safety levels and price tags, yeah, they're somewhat related. Speaking of price tags, next week we're testing one of the most expensive, most technical racing boots on the market, CD's Vortice. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Take care.